Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video and welcome back to Premier League predictions. A few Premier League results over the previous weekend didn't go exactly according to plan. There's a few big surprises um, and I'll get down to all of them as I talk about our fixture. It was the odd VAR incident, um, but I watched a championship game last night as I'm recording this, so today is Wednesday, so I was watching the Fulham um, and Preston game, or Preston Fulham, whatever way you want to put it, and I see what I like VAR in the Premier League, obviously you've all got your own opinions, please feel free to put your opinions down below about VAR. Um, but there should have been a red card, referee didn't pick it up, booked him. Now we all know with VAR in play, that would have been a bit different. And that's where I sort of rest my case. My case has been rested about once or twice a season already. And that's why I like VAR. I'm just saying that the Premier League use it wrongly. And if the Premier League are using it like they are, I don't think it's going to benefit in the Premier League. But it's up to the Premier League to get that sorted. Um, but anyway, guys, you know what I do. So, guys, you know what to do. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. And let's go. So the first game we're going to talk about is Liverpool versus Watford. Um, Liverpool beating Bournemouth 3-0 away from home. Um, great three points for Liverpool. Um, it really didn't happen for Bournemouth until Akin came off. Sorry for mispronouncing name. Um, and like another defender's problems at Bournemouth. Um, Watford drawing 0 0 at home with Crystal Palace. A great point for Watford. Um, and I'll speak more about Crystal Palace when I get down to their fixture. Obviously, we all know they're going up against Brighton this weekend. Um, but as I said, a great, you know, three points for Liverpool. Great point for uh, Watford. Liverpool are very much, you know, sitting comfortably. Uh, Top of the Premier League with seven points clear of Leicester. Man City look out the title running. I know there's still a long way to go and it still all could be changed. But at this present time, they're a long way out. But as far as this game goes, I'll go for a 3 1 Liverpool win. My next one is Burnley versus Newcastle. Um, Newcastle beating Southampton 2 1 at home. Um, big three points for uh, Newcastle there. Burnley losing 5-0 away to Tottenham. Sorry, Burnley fans, that's not a misprint. Um, I'm just looking at the table. Um, and this is how tight it is. You've got Southampton in 18th place. Um, with 15 points. And it's pretty much... Four points between relegation zone and Brighton, who's on 19 points. But a big bad weekend for Bournemouth this week could put them into the relegation zone. Um, I'll speak more about that when I get down to their fixture. But as far as this result goes, I'll go for a 1 all scoreline for that one. My next one is Chelsea versus Bournemouth. Bournemouth losing 3 0 to Liverpool, and uh, Chelsea being upstaged. By Everton, um, great um, first game by Duncan Ferguson, caretaker manager, um, and Everton have got one or two one or two candidates lined up as I know, um, but I don't think he, the manager will be in charge this weekend, um, like Nigel Pearson will be for Watford. Um, I think Everton might just leave Duncan Ferguson for this week. Um, but Chelsea um, losing 3-1 to Everton. Um, disappointing day for Chelsea. 
Bournemouth losing 3 0 at home to Liverpool. Bournemouth have got big problems. Um, I think that Bournemouth. Um, I, I don't know where the main. I mean, I know they've got a lot of defensive problems, um, injuries and such, but I can't see why it's such a big problem. Um, they've always been such an attacking team as well. Um, might it be time for Eddie Hab to go out the exit door, get another job, or you know, hard club, which I think he thoroughly deserves. Um, but he's done a great job, Bournemouth. Just hoping to turn it around. Um, yet yeah, again, the gun up against Chelsea's Frank Lampard. Um, and because it's at Stamford Bridge, I'll go for a 2 1 scoreline for that one. My next one is Leicester versus Norwich. Um, Leicester are having absolute field days at the minute, beating Villa 4 1 away from home this previous weekend. Norwich losing 2 1 at home to Sheffield United. Now, there's a big t talking point in that game that I'll speak about in just a minute because Sheffield United's my next fixture up. Um, but as I said, let's have a field day beating uh, Villa 4 1 away from home. And they are closest to Liverpool, but there's a seven point gap. So we're basically saying we've got to beat Liverpool twice and hopefully get another win and Liverpool to slip up again. Really can't see it for Liverpool at this present time. Um, but as far as this result goes, I'll go for a 3-0 Leicester win. My next one, as I've just mentioned, is Sheffield United versus Aston Villa. Right, um, let me just talk about the, let me just give you the scores. Um, Sheffield United won in 2-1 away to Norwich. Um, Villa losing 4-1 at home to Leicester. Um, Sheffield United, um, now this is another reason why I do like the AR. Sheffield United player winning for a tackle. Um, I've seen it, I don't think he touched the player. That's just my opinion, you've all free to, got your own and please feel free to put down in the comments below. Um, but what I've seen, camera angles and stuff, I don't think he actually touched the player. The referee sent him off, went to the VAR control room, um, and they said no, it wasn't a red card, he didn't touch him, or he slightly tapped him, or whatever they said. Um, but the first red card overturned, I think, in the Premier League. Um, but that's why I like it. I mean, there's so many benefits with VAR. We might, we might not all agree the way the Premier League are using it, or, you know, trying to benefit from it. But there are so much advantages to be had. And I've said this once, I say it again and again and again. We still got to leave the human factor in with the VAR. I know the VAR stands for Video Assistant Referee, but the VAR cannot talk to the ref, unfortunately. I love to hear the VAR talk, trust me, sometimes. Um, but as far as this result goes, I'll go for a 2 0 Sheffield United win. My next one is Southampton versus West Ham. West Ham losing 3 1 at home to Arsenal. Southampton losing 2 1 at away to Newcastle. I think West Ham let Arsenal back into the game. I think Arsenal pretty much had it covered until letting um, Arsenal get that first goal back and then Pepe and then Bamiang scoring. I think that result is down to West Ham. I think they're letting back in. Pretty quite just shut up, shut the shop, and you know, let chase them down basically, but make sure you keep it tight and compact. West Ham have had that three points, but you know, Arsenal get their first one in two months, so you know, fair play Arsenal. Um but as far as this result goes, I'll go for a one all scoreline for that one. And if that's the case, Watford cannot fall in, and uh, not Watford, West Ham cannot fall in to the bottom three either. Um, my next one is a bit of a derby. Um, yet again, it's a bit like, I don't know, um, some clubs, um, but it's Man United versus Everton. 
Wayne Rooney derby, I like to call it. Um, obviously, you know why Wayne Rooney played for Everton, went, went to United from Everton. Um, Everton beating Chelsea 3-1 at home. Um, Man United beat Man City 2-1 away from home. Um, Everton... Um, I still think they should leave Duncan Ferguson in charge for this week. Let's see if he can if he can beat United. Um and come on, let's all be a bit honest. And not that hard to beat. Um I know they have beaten City and they've had another win and, but anyone can stop that trail. Look at uh Man City, I mean Liverpool, they have thirty eight games but they're very lucky to get to whatever win they think. I think it's thirty eight games on a winning one. It's not that hard to stop. A couple of clubs nearly done it as well this season. Um, but, uh, as I said, Everton, leave Duncan in charge. Give him one more game. Man United coming um, very successful off the back of a 2-1 win at Manchester City in the Manchester Derby. Um, Everton very much coming off the bounce as well with a 3-1 win over Chelsea. But as far as this result goes, I'll go for a 2-1 Everton win. My next one is Wolverhampton versus Tottenham. Wolverhampton drawing 2-2 away to Brighton. Tottenham beating Burnley 5-0 at home. Um, now... Wolves went 1 0 up in that game, Bright came back 1 1, Brighton then went 2 1 up, and Wolves scored before half time. Um, I don't quite know how to sum that up as a Wolves fan, uh, if I'm all honest. But as far as this result goes, I'll go for a 2 2 scoreline for that one as well. My next one is Arsenal versus Manchester City. Arsenal beating West Ham 3-1 away from home. Man City losing 2-1 at home. As I said, first uh, three points for Arsenal in the space of two months. Um, we all know about Arsenal fan TV that, you know, the, bit, the thing that's gone on between Simon Jordan and Robbie, who does Arsenal fan TV, I'm not going to get bogged down with that. Um, you always hear my opinion on how I think fans should have their own opinions and should be allowed to. Otherwise, you're just trying to, you know, keep the fans out of it. That's not the way to go. If I was an owner of a football club, that's one thing I will take advice of. Um, because I've said it, I think it's my lead two predictions this weekend. Without the fans, there's no football club. Um, without the football club, there'd be no Premier League. So, you know, it's all budged into one and I think the fans should manage to have their say and make it be heard. Um, but this game is going to be interesting for one or two reasons. One can Arsenal make it back to back wins and possibly have a big shot up to fire a uh, fifth. Or can Man City win it and you know put a bit of pressure on Leicester and Liverpool. Um, but as far as this result goes I'll go for a 2-1 Manchester City win. My last one for this weekend, and yes, you all know who it is and what it is, is Crystal Palace versus Brighton. Right, Brighton losing, uh, sorry, drawing 2-2 at home to Wolverhampton. As I said, I'm already over the moon for that point, considering I've got three points at the Emirates Stadium. Uh, Palace drawing nil nil away to Watford. Um, now this sort of game could put. I mean, Brighton's currently sitting in twelfth, and Palace are currently sitting in tenth. But if Brighton win this game, they will go over Palace. Because they've got the same goal difference, just a different points tally. So Brighton need to win this game to, you know, swap the table. 
Um, obviously, I know all about the rivalry. I know why it exists. And, you know, if you want to hear about it, it's a video for another day because it could take me about half hour to explain why it's all happened um, between these two clubs. It's been called many derbies throughout the years. The M23 derby, the Al Mallory derby because Al Mallory took charge of Brighton and Palace. Um, you know, Terry ter ter Renables and, you know, it's got all names in the air. It's, you know, one of them, I, I never called it a derby. I know they're rivals, but I never actually called it a derby. And I've got my own opinions for that as well when I'm done that in a previous video. But if you want to hear that again, please feel free to drop it down below and I'll do a big video on this uh, Brighton Palace rivalry. Um, but as far as the game goes, I'm going to go for a 2 0 Brighton win. I just think that point against. Wolves and the three points against Arsenal. I gotta give Brighton a bit more confidence than what Palace is gonna have um, after coming with a nil-nil draw against Watford um, away from home. So, but anyway, guys, you know what to do. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Ciao.